Yay. That's what's left of the uh, axle seal. Again. Sore as heck from the last couple of days of working on this. A couple of hours of daylight here and there, and that's about it. So I'm trying to get it everything so that you guys can see what I'm doing here. And today is the last day of this job. I uh, would have been done with this yesterday, but I ran out of light. The camera was incapable of focusing in the dark, and I didn't want you guys to miss the most important part. Torquing all of this stuff down. We're going to clean these up a little bit so we don't have any thread problems. Okay. Now those look a lot better. Same thing on the other one. Now you're probably going to think I'm a little silly for this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put some anti-seize on the sort part of the threads. All but the last quarter inch or so which is going to have Loctite on it. But we're going to coat the rest of the bolt just so that it doesn't get seized in the bore. Just like that. And then that last little bit we're going to put the uh, thread locker on. Okay. Blue thread locker. I don't want to make it impossible to get back out. A little, about one drop on it. Doesn't need a whole lot. Same thing on this one. Now let's get the first one up and in the bottom. Alright, I jacked the vehicle up, put a jack stand underneath the control arm, lowered it back down, pushed the control arm up, gave me a little bit more to work with, and a little less having to fight with the breaker bar, but I got the bottom bolt in and started. I'm going to try to do the other one. I just got one bolt started. Let's see if we can get the other one. There, that started. Yay. Okay, those are uh, 17s or 19s. Those are 19s, so we're going to get those cranked down. I've got the wrench. How oh, I'm warming the wrench. That's right. We have a slightly warmer temperature today of about 34. It's supposed to go up to about 36. in and snug but not torqued or tight yet I want to get everything that I can put back together first so that I have more stability I don't have to worry about things moving around on me while I'm trying to torque them we're going to be uh, reusing old nuts where we have to um, 
brand new cotter pin, brand new cotter pin, broken cotter pin. We're going to have to replace this one with something. Probably got a good one from one of the other ones in here. Uh, let's see if I get this torque down. Uh, looking at my notes, now I'm kind of double guessing half of the stuff that I wrote down, but I think I've got it sorted out. If I'm wrong, I apologize in advance. I've got 67 foot-pounds on the upper ball joint. Now let's find where the counter pin goes in. Find a little hole. I'll conveniently line it right up right there. Okay. The long side in and down. Grab my little more pliers. And just fold it up and around. I try to make it so that somebody doesn't accidentally get speared on anything. So I try to push everything up and out of the way. The most important part is whatever you do with the, the cotter pin is that it just isn't going to come back out. You don't have to get crazy with it. So, top's in and torqued. Now let's get the sway bar length in and torqued. This is going to be fun because it's going to want to spin. So I'm going to try spinning it down with my impact. Maybe that'll work. Now I have to grab my vice grips. Oh, that was nice. Okay, let's try it again with 41. I think we're already there. Now, I am not tightening that anymore. I don't like the way it feels. I'm not tightening it up anymore. This is where experience is something that's kind of critical is not always all your information is going to be correct and you're going to have to have the sense to know when it's not so I do not know offhand exactly what the torque is on this and I'm not gonna not gonna feed you a bunch of crap but it's tight it almost feels like it's on the verge of stripping a thread if I crank it any tighter so I'm just gonna leave it right where it is it's anti-seized I'm not gonna worry about it and it is tight as we're right here, let's get this upper tie rod or the tie rod end torque. Let's figure out what the torque is on that. That's the 19. Oh, that's the 21. That's a big one. And according to what I was just double checking, the upper ball joint and the tie, tie rod end are both the same at 67 foot pounds. pin hole is right there. That one's the right size. It's through. If I can't get this through, then we're going to have to crank it down to the next one. It looks like I might actually be able to get it through. Give it a little tap tap. It might make it. On those pliers, there we go. Yeah, let's go the top one over, knock it down, and curl the bottom one down it out of the way. There we go. Got a brand new NTK wheel speed sensor. Broke off the old one trying to take it out. A little teeny tiny thing, 45 bucks for this thing. It's just, this is nuts. We're going to install this. And to play it safe with this, we're going to coat this with anti seize also. Now, before I go doing anything, I'm going to make sure it actually fits in, in, in there easily. Which it does. I already picked up some anti-seize off the bore. 
I, I swear they make these things so that they break on purpose. value on this one is but I'll tell you right now that it's very 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 light one single twist of the wrist and that's it that's all I'm gonna do with that push until you get a click work your way back put your first clip in work your way up and 17 millimeter wrench Double wrench method, make this tight. Again, these are about, I believe, the paper wherever I put it. So let's see, hub bolts are 59 foot pounds. Again, if you're really concerned that it is at 59 foot pounds, use your, use your torque wrench and a crow foot, and you'll be able to uh, put it at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to work it that way. Back double check. Alright, now those are all torqued. Now we got the bottom ones to do. 118 foot pounds and the lower ball joint is also 118 foot pounds so let's go cranking this baby up 20 30 40 100 110 118 oh boy that's tight Locked. Let's start with this one first, I guess. 118 foot pounds. least that monster of a ball joint. I just gotta find something that fits it. I believe it was a 24 millimeter. I don't think I've got a 24, but I do have SAE that fits, so let's find it. Yeah, well, that was nice and easy. Got a 15 16 Perfect fit. Perfect fit. foot pounds and then whatever it takes to get the cotter pin in. Now 
No, I'm still recording. Okay. Now we're gonna. Oh, it turned on me, you stinker. Oh well. I will find the hole. This is somewhere right there. Well, because of the direction that it's in now, there's the hole. Now you see it. I just can't see it well enough to know how much more I have to go. So we got the uh, lower cotter pin in, got it peened over, 118 foot pounds. Well, let's move on to the, uh, oh, let's see, what do we got now? Yeah, we might as well put the uh, rotor in place. Ready to put the rotor back on. We're going to fluid film the face that this is going to be sitting against so that we don't end up with any nasty stuff building up and making it rust out. We don't need to have this on right now because we still have to do other things, but we're going to get this done and out of the way. Because we're probably going to have to bend the back shield. I need lug nuts, two of them, please. This is some spots on this backing plate that I probably bent it just a little bit. I don't want it rubbing. Just hold everything square. Thank you. Right. Now we can rotate this without anything flop flopping around. me not. Uh. <laughs> I hey. doubt it. Huh? I doubt it. Why? If you couldn't hear this bearing when it was starting to go. Oh, I knew. I didn't really hear it. I felt it. Now, we'll see if we can get this unhooked. Turn it, bring it down here. Get these brake pads spread out. Hopefully nobody pushed the brake pedal at all. There, good. Set that in place. Make sure you take your hook down. Last thing you need to do is have one of these get embedded in the sidewall of a tire. Now, we've taken the bolts. We've coated them with NACs, all but the end of the threads, which have got blue thread locker on them. We're going to feed these in. Get a caliper. Get the caliper situated. See if I can not block your view. Get these bolts in and started. Double check and position everything else. Make sure everything is the way it should be before we go any further. situated, that goes there, there, everything's routed correctly, okay, now let's go ahead and tighten those caliper bracket bolts down, or in this case, caliper bolts, the bracket and caliper all in one piece, and those I believe are 17 millimeter, where did I put my 17, it's one, there it is, that's right, I need an extension. Now that 
I found the extension so I can get around the brake line. Get this last one tight. Snug. Now we're going to torque those. There's a little piece of paper that's got all my torques on it. Those are the caliper bracket bolts. Um, let's see, 80 to 91 foot pounds. I think I'll stick with the 80. They're typically in the 70 to 80 range, anyways. Right. Torque wrench, get out of here. 80. Now we're down to the 10 and 12 millimeter stuff. Let's see. We got that weird bolt with the two different size threads on it. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand that at all. That's what was in there. That's what's going in there. Now where did I put my 12? Hey, how do you like that? I grab almost everything I need except for the 12. The 12. All right. And that is almost always sitting right on the end of one of my extensions. I have an extension with a 10 millimeter on it, and I have an extension with a 12 millimeter on it, and I never take them off because I'll lose them if I do. I have some weird, weird habits. But I think all mechanics have some kind of a weird habit. There's, yeah. If you guys got any weird habits, put them in the comments. <laughs> Sometimes weird, weird things benefit everybody. And this is probably about 15 foot pounds right there. Click, click. And then we got one more little 10 millimeter bolt right here that holds this to this bracket. That is also already anti-seized. That's probably about eight foot pounds because it's only a 10 millimeter bolt. And we got one more left up here on the top. Now, recheck, double check. Torqued cotter pin. Torqued no cotter pin. Torqued, torqued, torqued. Torqued, torqued. Torqued and cotter pin. Torqued and cotter pin. Torqued and torqued. Uh, everything is in. Everything is torqued except for the axle nut that's still got grease on it. And then this little do that right here that holds everything in place when we're done. And the old hub the bolts. Old, uh, <laughs> now when it comes to tightening down an axle nut, there's a couple of different ways that you can go about doing it. Uh, one of the ways is taking a screwdriver and dropping it down through the ribs of your rotor. That way there, when you try to turn, it locks it. Sometimes I'll do it in here, I'll do it up here. In this case, this right here should be sufficient. Otherwise, you can put the wheel back on and then tighten it up through the wheel. Um, you can also leverage against your studs and hold the whole assembly still that way and try. 
I find that once the caliper is bolted in place, this is the easiest way of doing it. Just be careful, you don't want to damage the rotor or destroy or snap your tool. So be, be mindful. And let's get this cranked down. Find out what the torque spec on the axle. Oh, that was 173 foot pounds now that I remember that. Um, and the big socket, which is in the cool warmer. I now have a nice hot 35 millimeter socket. Okay, so right now I'm on 80. I don't even know why I'm looking at my torque wrench. This only goes up to 150. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that part. So, being that it only goes to 150, this is where we're going to be estimating how much I weigh on a breaker bar. <laughs> one foot right there this is a two foot breaker bar three quarters of the way see 150 to two by two is 300 now if I go to halfway between 300 and 150 I'm at 225 so I come down just a little farther right about there and I say that in all fairness about 173 Now, don't jump up and down on it to make it tighter because you will squash your bearing. <laughs> and then to find the little doodad here that lines up. What is that for? Just make sure it stays tight or? Yep. Okay, I'm going to have to turn it just a hair bit more, just to make it line up. I can't find a single one that lines up perfectly. That one's the closest one, and somebody marked it. So we're going to try, uh, try to get it just a little further. Is that enough? Red marked. Red mark now lines up. Get our cotter pin in. Bend this a little bit here and there. Can't reach the tappy tap. I don't have to worry too much about getting these where nobody's going to get caught on them because you're putting a cap over the top of it, which is going to be this cap right here. Before we put this on, I'm going to spray everything in here again with some more of the fluid film. <laughs> it might only be a car, but I got half a shop in there. Yeah. And then just spray paint it. You have to wipe the rotor off because I got it on the rotor. And then we're going to take this, put this on. Now, when you're putting this on, be very careful. You know, make sure you. Grease all your ball joints. I already greased the upper one. We're going to take care of the tie rod end right now. Before you go on to an existing joint, make sure you wipe it off first so you don't accidentally inject any crud in. Uh, 
right to the point where either you see grease or it swells. And now let's get the bottom one done. Well, the bottom one is from the top of it. I gotta turn the wheel the other way. Yeah, actually, here. You know, oh, you got these. Yeah, this will make it easier to get fitting. Everything into the mud. Well, turn on it, crank on it, unless the steering wheel locked on you. There you go. All right, that's good. All right, 10 millimeter wrench. You're gonna have to adjust that and just a hair. Brand new socket. Five sixteenths for uh, battery terminals. They didn't think this out very well when they designed this, because that dust shield, is if that grease seal, is wicked in the way. The grease seal is almost on top of the Zerk. Almost. Come on. Get in there. Just starting to swell. You don't want to pump so much grease into them that they explode. Mm -hmm. Double check everything again. Caps on tight. We've already done everything in there. Don't need to go back in. That grease is coming right out of the boot. That's good. All right, uh, let's see, double check, double check. All right, go ahead and put your wheel straight. We're all done in here, just put the wheel back on. Lug nut started. Started. Once you got all your lug nuts in, I like to put the locking lug nut directly across from the valve stem. Once you've got them all in, before you snug them down, Hit the rim several times. Rotate the wheel. Hit it again. You'll hear a little rattling noise. Just keep doing that. And then tighten your lug nuts up a little bit more. The whole purpose of doing this is just to help recenter all of the older, reused uh, components in here. They'll end up ever so slightly off center from whatever. So this just helps to every, make everything happy. And then tighten down your lug nuts. We're going to go ahead set the vehicle back down on the ground and then we're going to crank all of these down to 83 foot pounds so let's lower the vehicle down the only times I tighten and put a tire on never just crank on it well, this is the first time it's touching the ground under its new parts my jack is being really stubborn about going the rest of the way back down. I need a new jack, but I cannot find one like this anywhere. This is a three-ton SUV jack. 
This particular jack has a very, very long 18 and a half inch double stage lift. Can't find this jack anywhere. This jack's 25 years old. And it still works. <laughs> now you know why I want another one. All right, let's get these torqued down to 83 foot pounds in a star pattern. Including the locking lug nut.2009 Toyota Tacoma upper ball joint lower ball joint hub assembly wheel bearing complete if you guys found this one helpful please feel free to like comment subscribe hit that notification bell for upcoming videos and have a great day don't forget you got no more excuses pick up those wrenches Just because I thought you guys would find this really interesting, because God knows I did. Look at these bearings. Edges chewed up. That one's still round. That one's got a couple of little flat spots on it. That one's got a couple flat spots. Oh, here's a good one. That one's got multiple flat spots. And oh, colors too. We got a little rainbow in there. But uh, the one that really caught my eye the most was this one. How in the world does that happen? But this this is what was in the bearing. That's 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 a lot of crunching and bouncing and yeah. The uh I know you shoved one up in here. Yep. You know, well, this one, but I didn't have the nut on the bottom in far enough to get the new one in there. It's not in the box with the ball joint. Fluid film. Or not. My fluid film just died.